when I was a kid, I used to draw and paint, you know? So there's a side of me that was kind of into the quote artistic, you know, thingies. Visual arts. Visual arts, yeah. Um, but then when like girls and cars came along, I blew that off and, and basically, <laughs> you know, just like <laughs> went on to other things. craft truck through the lens. I'm here with John Leonetti. Uh, we're on location in San Clemente huh. in his beautiful home. Thanks for being with us. You're welcome. <laughs> you're very welcome. Thanks for being here. So I hear that you're not the first Leonetti in the business. This is true. <laughs> can you tell me how you yourself got into the business? You could call it nepotism. Um, actually, uh, my daddy, who is 97 years old, um, was in the business like, I don't know, the 30s, something like that. Wow. He was an electrician on The Wizard of Oz and he gaffed Singing in the Rain and um, he started a, a motion picture equipment business in the mid 50s, which is when I was born, ish. Not around telling, that time, around that time. general vicinity. And um, yeah, and so uh, I just went to work at like 13 in the family business, you know, like you do in any Italian family business and uh, kind of had really nothing to do with me necessarily wanting to be in the business. Well, it happened somewhere along the line there, were you? It did, it did. When I got out of college, I, went, I got to work with a cameraman named James, uh, Jack, sorry, Jack Whitman. And um, he took me on this show called The Dukes of Hazard. The original. Um, I was a focus puller on the Dukes of Hazard. That badass. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, cheers to that, Dukes of Hazard. It was uh, quite fun, actually. Because you like cars and you like girls and you like the process of. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, we did 11 pages a day and, and lighting wasn't exactly, uh, you know, <laughs> anything sign. but, you know, two, in those days, two arcs or an arc behind the camera. It's a little different than what we do now. <laughs> and not, not dissing with Jack Whitman. Um, did as a cameraman because he was an amazing cameraman. He knew more about, honestly, um, how to use the camera than as much as anybody I've ever worked with in my career. So yeah. that was very cool to have that opportunity to work with this dude, this great guy. Yeah. I admired him actually very much. Anyway, um, once I got a chance to get on the Dukes, um, I met a director there. He gave me art books, like books of Rembrandt or whoever, and, and said, you know, you might even want to think about directing. I said, really? You know, anyway, he, he, for some reason, he thought I had some kind of... Saw uh, some potential there. Yeah, whatever. So anyway. You're into it. I was, yeah. So <laughs> in any case, eventually I, um, I went to uh, work on and off for him, for my brother, Matt. And it wasn't until I was about 25 years old where lighting kind of, I got it. And it's not until you like get lighting, I think, that you can really... Um, I want to say maybe become even more passionate about it or become passionate about it. Let's when you put see it how way. relevant it is. Yeah, and, and understand what it takes to, uh, to light something appropriately for the story, you know? It's very different when, you know, now we're shooting everything basically, uh, or almost everything digitally, except for, a, you know, a few television shows or a few um, features, uh, which I, I get. I embrace, however, I think it's kind of sad, you know. Because you can get away with more, maybe? Well, it's not like you could look at a monitor and light and go, put light here, put light there. You had to know what the hell you're doing, expose it properly. And hopefully it was, you know, in a, based on the story for artistic reasons. And so technically you had to have your shit together, but, but and, and creatively you had to you know, kind of marry that. But it's different now. And, and, and not that I, I think lighting off a monitor is a bad thing, I don't. However, I do believe that um, the experience that I have acquired and many others that come up from film have a, a whole different experience and expertise that's just different. And is it helpful? Hell yeah, I mean, uh, there's no question about it. With your experience, you know how it needs to turn out and you know how to get it there. Absolutely. And that's the bottom line. Gosh, I hope so. Yeah, I do yeah. and I love it. I love the process completely. Amazing. Um, earlier you had said to me that um, we're here in San Clemente, and you uh, mm -hmm. enjoy some surfing activities over there. I do. Um, that was interesting because um, one of 
the films that you worked on, you know, Soul Surfer, yeah, uh, yeah. is an amazing true story it is. Uh, about a surfer. Can you tell us a little bit about the story and sure. how Love you to. got involved in it? Honored to be a part of that film, first it's of beautiful. all. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. The, uh, the passion that uh, Bethany Hamilton has had uh, for the ocean and surfing is what drove her to, you know, get back in the water, what, three weeks later. Anyway, after she lost her arm from, you know, a tiger shark at 13 years old. And I got to tell you, um, that was one of the last, maybe that was the last film show I did. And there was a reason for it then, which we could talk about if you want, but, yeah. more, but more than anything, um, talk about, you know, living the dream and working in Hawaii um, in the winter on the North Shore of Oahu and, and um, going to uh, Kauai as well. Um, and working on a true story, not true, just, true. you know, a surfer tale, right. but an actual right. true inspiring story of someone who, you know, comes the closest to death I can think of and, and gets back yeah. on the board. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It was... Uh, it's quite inspiring. Literally, um, the second day I was, I went, I arrived in Hawaii uh, for prep. I met with Sean um, McNamara. He's um, our director, one, wonderful dude. Oh my God! Immediately he says, "Let's go to Kauai and see where it took place. Meet Bethany. Meet her family." And everybody was so cool. Um, I love the water. I mean, to be able to do dialogue in the water, I mean, to have, you know, your gaffer and key grip out there using a, a foam bounce board as a, as, a, a, as a bounce, but really like a boogie board to hang out in the water and just, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what we did. It was all very natural. I mean, that was it, you know. And How it, did you get some of those amazing shots? There's some skateboarders in the film as well. And yeah. there's some crazy yeah. shots of the point of view of under the skateboard. Like, yeah, we put that? a GoPro under there. The GoPro, I thought it was. Yeah, this is kind of before people were really, I mean, everybody has a GoPro and they're using them now. I mean, that's like, you know, it's way, 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 way more common now was than, than it was. Was that one of the first times it was maybe used for? Um, for it, one of, maybe, but I wouldn't say the first time by any means. And there were, you when know. When it was first emerging as an Yeah, option. yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I, I, yeah, absolutely. And the cool thing is, I think we Velcroed it or, we, yeah, I think we put Velcro on each, you know, just to, you know, and just stuck it under there and just went for it. It's so simple. It's so simple and it's so cool. And those cameras are amazing, actually. You know, now they're, uh, now they have 4K. Uh, the Hero 3 is 4K and insane. And, and that's a whole, I mean, what's going yeah, on right now is, yeah, it's, it, it's mind blowing. Definitely. It's cool. Um, you, I think you just finished the the second Insidious film. I did. It? Yep. Yeah. And what what was your experience like? What camera was used? How were? What was the workflow with that film? Well, that was uh, the Alexa. Yep. You know, um, which is aside from I think one other camera that's emerged in the past year or so, which is the F sixty five and the F fifty five. Um, the camera of choice. It's mm -hmm. it's it. It creates images gracefully, kind of like film. Not exactly, but kind of like film. As close as we've gotten so far. Yeah, it's great. It's uh, extremely sensitive to light, and is, it seems like it's becoming. I mean, with these, with the um, the firmware updates or whatever you want to call them, yeah. it seems like it's getting more sensitive. I don't know. Um, I'm using less and less and less light. Um, every movie as I go along, and it's kind of crazy. That um, should be able to help in, uh, you know, in a thriller film, because there's a lot of dark moments and um, little it, nuances in the dark. It's always happening in the dark. It, it does, yeah. no question. Yeah. Uh, however, because it's so light sensitive, it's more about taking light away mm. than actually adding light. Okay. Okay. So um, it's the opposite. It is, yeah. because it's so sensitive. You got to be really careful because, and, and it depends on what kind of blacks you want and, and all that, you know. Um, it's, it's, the camera is amazing though. What did you use on the first Insidious? We used, at that time, that was the advent of the red Mysterium X chip, which is basically the, the same chip that's in the Epic, but it's a di slightly different beast, I guess. But um, that's before the Epic had even come out. There's a, the scene at the end where he goes into the, the dream sequence and it's all that dark and red and 
Um, it's terrifying. Like what? Yeah. What was your vision there to scare the pants off people? Well, yes, but well, that's um, that was in the first one. It was, that was kind of like a part of the further we call it, uh, right? Yes. And and that was with the red faced devil. And and really that vision, um, I have to give a lot of credit to James Wan, yeah. our director. Yeah. I mean, he, that was his vision that I totally helped him realize. So yeah. a lot of that th that film, if you really watch it, and I had to watch it again recently because we just did the second one, and I, and I had to kind of analyze it, like, are we going to have it look the same or are we going to not, you know? Yeah. But it's very desaturated, and there's a, there's a lot of, like, it's almost like a skip bleach kind of touch over the first Insidious in, grade, in gradations, depending on what's going on. And anyway, with the red-faced monster in, the, in his lair at the end, yeah. We really went for some real color and red, and that was like, you know, to really kind of uh, to let the audience experience how freaky that dude was relative to the rest of the images in the in the film. Well, that's what's great about your ability to light a different environment. You feel like you're transported somewhere different. Mm -hmm. um, it's true. You know, with the tones that you're using, it's making me feel scared. You don't know what's around the corner and the shadows and everything. So, I mean, that's, yeah. I love horror yeah. movies and really? thrillers, so I'm, I'm all about it. Well, then you have to see The Conjuring. Yes, The Conjuring. Because it okay. is by far probably the best scary movie I've ever worked on. <gasps> and it's it's in the zone of the pol of Poltergeist. I mean, I was a focus puller on Polter the original Poltergeist yeah. as well. And um, photographically, um, it's it was so fun to do. Yeah. You know, it's one of these movies where we, we built a 6,000 square foot, for, you know, turn of the century farmhouse on stage from nothing. Oh, great. We, we, we found a location. And, Wilmington, North Carolina, on the Black River, and we, you know, shot the backings all the way around, and and put those outside the windows, and then we shot in the real location, and we saw those same images through the windows, and I mean, it's it's awesome. That's cool. So if you if you have you had control over the entire set and how it was lit totally right? total control, and it's 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 just it was just really fun. And James, our director, James Wan, uh, kicked the shit out of that one as well. And to be able to be a part of that, you know, with our family team that works with and for him, um, we had a great time. Are you James Wan's dude? So far, you know, um, listen, I've done five in a row with brother James, yeah. and. Um, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful to be his friend and so far his cinematographer. Um, I believe I'm gonna do the next one with him. Excellent. Sounds like it. You never know. Um, but, but when you uh, have that team mentality, it just makes everything just go as planned. That collaboration. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's. We definitely have an, an unspoken relationship visually. What's so cool about him is he is extremely visual. And, you know, I met him on a movie, the first movie was um, called Dead Silence. It was a universal picture. It was his first studio picture. Yep. And, and before that was Saw, okay? That's, yep. that's all he had done. And, and I was kind of a universal boy, uh, cinematographer, you know, and they, and since, you know, it's just the way our business is generally, yep. if you're, you know, for, for a newcomer or upcomer, uh, to do a studio picture, they usually put someone that's kind of a little experienced with them, someone that have done a few of their movies, they trust, whatever. So I happen to be someone that they had him inter interview with as one of, you know, and coincidentally, our vision seemed to be the same in the movie and it, we hit it off and, you know, now it's five in a row since. And then I'm, again, I'm really, really, you know, thankful for that's that. that's how it happens. Yeah. So I've been waiting as long as I can to talk to you about one of my, one of my favorite movies uh, that you worked on. Hmm. Um, I'm a video game fan, and mm. Mm. Really? Mortal Kombat! Oh, yeah. Dude, Mortal. that was an amazing film. I love it. Well, Well, cool, I but... love 90s films, too. They're, they're amazing. Me, too, actually. And, and actually, as a, the as a shooter... The energy of them is just ridiculous. And it's like, I don't even care if it's a VHS. I'm watching it. I'm in. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, it's amazing. Um, well, we did some pretty groundbreaking shit in that movie. Yeah. Because, I mean, at that point, video games into films was kind of just stumbling along. It wasn't this huge thing that it is now. So, you know, True. for me in my teenage years, for that to come out. It's interesting. Um, it was super exciting. Super fun movie to do. Yeah. Paul Anderson, director, yeah. another super visual person. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, again, to have that as a 
inspiration is a sort of a kickoff point for creating some trippy visuals, <laughs> which they were. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, crazy we, characters, crazy characters, and outfits, universe. and 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 outworld. Um, and you know, I, actually, I kind of got to come up with, and you know, with Paul, but having you know, purple moons and yellow fires, and and you know, lighting for that stuff, and and oh my God, how much well the fun. lighting was bonkers, but it kind of had to be because oh. the video games. Crazy. Yeah, it was super um, stylized, super fantastic rich super rich colors yeah super rich colors and super thick gels oh my god you know when you light with those kind of well whatever you light with those kind of gels they're super thick so when you put light through them like the lights aren't near as powerful so it's kind of like oh my god you got to be you you have to have a lot more light and yeah. and i had never worked with well quite that amount of light ever actually than the first mortal kombat film the mask we used some serious gels as well but but it was the lighting setups weren't as big you know they're more contained and uh but that was fun the not just the lighting but um you know shooting the action uh, the fights uh in a very there's a lot of very um symmetrical stoic just you know shots and then there's a lot of like very frenetic stuff as well and it was kind of fun to learn how to shoot a tell the story of a video game with the camera and then have crazy fun with the lighting definitely there's like one character i don't even know his name and he had like two arms on each side and goro 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 was he like a puppet or a muppet he or, was is and there was, special lighting for a muppet um in the in the cinematographer's handbook is there special lighting um <laughs> there kidding. there is special lighting yes there is actually <laughs> Because he's got uh, four arms. Yeah, he's he, well, he is, it's but there's kind of like a, a baseline for uh, <laughs> for lighting like uh, puppets or you know <laughs> things that are supposed to be real but they're fake, yeah. um, and that is you don't want to light them too flat. Too much, you want to cross light much. them. You want some shadows. You know <laughs> yeah. all that. Um, you want to be able to bury the wires or the whatever they're else so digitally you don't have to take away every you know yeah. erase everything or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but there was that. But we called it Goro time. That, that thing was <laughs> that thing was like gnarly. I mean, it, that was terrifying. Uh, finish him. Time to die. Finish him. Well, along the same line of yeah. crazy characters, you know, The Mask, mm. another one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. 